Hi, I'm Stacy with Easy Design Resources, and today we're in episode three of our series, Merch Design Hot Rod Edition. In this episode, we're creating another design from scratch using our sketch uh, set up as a template. We're gonna be running through the transform tool. We're gonna be doing some type character manipulation. We're gonna be working with the pen tool. And within this design, we're creating a new badge design. If you'd like to expand your design skills and grow in your knowledge of Adobe Illustrator, get my free course at easydesignresources.com slash free workshop. This is my Adobe Illustrator Made Easy Intro to Illustrator course. I walk you through how to set up a document, how to set up your workspace, and how to use everything available to you. All right, let's get to it. I've already got the template set up. Uh, just like before, I just dragged it in, set it to size, put it on its own layer, and I set that layer up to template. It's got a dim uh, percentage of 50%, but if I wanted to, I could change that to like 30, just to make it a little bit lighter. Um, but 50 works. We'll just run with what we got. I'm also going to be carrying over our cross wrenches from the last couple of designs. So this design is going to be a script and tail type of format uh, with a badge. I want to use the same script as I did in the last piece. So let's go real quick and just take a copy of that right here. And then I'm also going to grab the uh, Restore, Repair, Customize, and the Established. Copy that. Those are all different formats of text that I, I like to continue to use. All right. All right. So what first thing I'm going to do is just type out Classic. Select that holding Shift and Option. I'm going to drag it down and make a copy. And also, let me spell Classic correctly. Classic Corner. All right, and then we'll just drag those out to be kind of what I think the size will end up being. Select the text again, hold option, and just drag it down and do garage. Garage will be all caps and possibly in the same font as established. Just for the sake of getting things Together, let me make this black. I like to work in black and white, as I mentioned before, and make sure that the design balances well uh, before I start adding color. I selected uh, Garage and then I hit D. What D does is it make, gives you a fill of black and a stroke of white at one point. It just helps me see uh, where I'm at with the um, the way things are laying out here with the cross wrenches. I think what I'm going to do uh, in a little bit here is I might extend those wrenches and I can reduce the size of the opening in the, the box end um, just to kind of give it a little bit less heft. All right, the font we have is back soda. Let me select both of these lines of text. Go to character. All right, drag it out a little bit more. I'm just grabbing, I've got both of them selected, grabbing that uh, outer bounding box holding shift. It's going to just kind of continue to pull it out in the direction I'm wanting it to go. Let me move corner down, classic. Typing an E, that's gonna get us our free transform tool. And I'm just gonna click holding control and shift and I'll drag that up until the bottom of C or the, the shape of C looks like it's fitting with my sketch. And then adjust the other side. All right. I think what I'll do too is just to keep everything the same, I'm going to just move that again, holding shift and option, drag it down, copy corner, double click on classic and paste. So now corner is on the exact same um, angle as classic. All right. So it's a little bit too, um, a little bit too distant on this outer side. So I'm going to move that up a little bit and move the other side down a little bit. And then selecting both of them, 
They're a little bit too italicized for what I envisioned, so I'm just going to straighten them up a little. All right, we want to make sure we've got good um, relationship and space between our lines and text. Um, the C at the top gets a little close to that L. So I think what I want to do is select, let me grab it, that C, and I want to move it up a little bit. And I want to rotate it the other way. Just a little, just to give it a little bit more distance. Uh, I'm also going to pull that L a little bit closer, just holding Option and arrow key left. One looks like that'll do it. And then, uh, let's see. So copy that. I moved it, rotated it three degrees. I think that might be good to do down here as well. And it just gives us a little bit more of an upright character um, instead of the, the letters leaning so far to, so hard to the right. I'm also going to bump up um, O-R-N-E-R -E of corner just by coming over here and um, using the baseline shift and then just moving it up. I love the way the relationship is here where the S's come down um, and they fit in the space between the corner of the R's, uh, kind of giving us some consistent space between the words. All right. I think what I'll also do is grabbing this C, I'm going to bring it down. And then I want to see um, how the C's are looking, if they're angled the right way, if they angled together. I'm just dragging this top one down over the bottom one to see um, how well, how similar they are. Just change the color. So it looks like our top one is actually skewed a little bit more than the bottom one, which is not what I was expecting, but we'll go ahead and go with that. I like it. So my goal with the sketches is just to give uh, a general feel, a general movement um, and general proportions. So then once I start working with type, then I'll try to get the type to be as close to kind of what I was going after. And then of course I'll fine tune it once I get in and find out exactly how the um, the fonts are going to work with my overall concept. So here it works out pretty great. Uh, shifting, uh, moving classic corner up to where the top of the font is at the top of where my sketch was at. We can see the word classic fits great. Um, corner looks like it also fits pretty great. So next I'm just going to draw out that tail and see if I want to connect it with the C or let it be its own separate element. Let me move it up just a little bit to see how I had that tail flowing. Type a P for my pen tool, and I'm going to go ahead and pull it from down here. Uh, one thing I'm going for is just general feel, and then I'll come in and add anchor points where I feel like they'll be beneficial. Uh, Shift X will change it from a fill to an outline. And then uh, we've got as you can see, um, our line is wanting to continue to curve. But if I come back and click on that anchor point, it will allow it to be stopped. And then I can start wherever I want the next point and then add that concave to the uh, end of the tail. All right. It's a pretty good shape. Um, let me hide our template and see what it looks like. Typing E for the free transform tool, I can grab that and kind of pull it over towards the C. If I hold Option, it'll rock it, which is great. I like that. OK. And then typing an R, I can just rotate it a little bit just to kind of settle it. Also, I want to just adjust this end. Okay. All right, I'm going to copy corner. I'm going to hide it. So that's a control C, command C for copy. 
Command 3 to hide, paste it in front, convert it to outlines. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and get rid of the rest of the letters. I just want the C. And just real quick, I'm going to use I'm going to use the eraser tool to get rid of uh, the parts of this C that I don't need. Okay. So now using the direct selection tool, typing A, I'm just going to hold shift and drag it down until it fits a little bit better with my tail here. And let me drag that tail over. Now I want to marry these, um, these curvatures so that it looks believable. All right. I'm going to select that C and lock it, Command 2. You zoom in and you can get a lot more exact with where your lines are at and how they are how they are connecting uh, with the existing path. All right. Command zero is going to pull it all the way out. All right. It gets a little bit um, in a funny shape right down here. So what I want to do is at this point, I want to select the two pieces together. I'm going to go to Pathfinder and Unite. And then at this point, I'm going to give a little bit more uh, movement and clarity to the way these paths are working together. All right. Okay. Uh, typing a P, I'm going to come in and I want to remove this anchor point. I think we'll hit the minus mark, allowing us to do that. Type an A, grab the uh, handlebars that it gives us. Um, typing a P again, I want to come in. This anchor point, because of the way we uh, use the Pathfinder tool, um, it's not uh, conti continuous uh, where grabbing this bar will affect the other end of it. So I want to I want to make it that way. So I'm just going to come in and draw the line a little and then pull it out a little bit further until I have what looks to be a properly flowing line. There we go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and move this one down here as well. So if we hover right over it, you can see we got the minus mark. And then I want to uh, work with, oh, and do that again. And then I want to work with the handlebar. There we go. You, you, uh, you'll get much more, you'll get much smoother and fluid lines if you if your anchor points are set up to curve in this format, as opposed to uh, independently on either end of that anchor point. All right, I think that's good. Um, command option three is going to unhide, uh, unhide our the work corner. Um, for, for now, I'm just gonna get rid of the fill on that C and keep everything else the way it is. Uh, looking at it, I think I'd like to maybe bring this up a little. So I'm going to select these two anchor points. That's going to affect this part. And I'm going to type R and just click right up here. And it rotated it up instead of just dragging it. And I think that is a little bit more of what I'm looking to do here. Okay. We don't want the letters to overlap the tail.
All right, so now it, we're looking at, as we're looking at this, the bottom of the C is starting to look a little more like the bottom of the original C. And if we do Command Y to go to wireframe mode, we can see we've also shortened it, which I'd say is probably not part of my intention, but let me just readjust. Okay. I think that basically just undid what we just did. All right, we're going to go ahead and keep this. I'm going to type the E for feed transform tool and then just bring the uh, ORNER down a little bit. And then I'm going to shift it up. Okay. I'm going to get rid of this anchor point and try to get the curve to do what I want with this bar and that and the bar on the end. Okay. So our C is a little bit shorter than it was before, but not a lot. It doesn't look shorter at this point. So I can actually type a V, bring it down a little bit, bring corner the rest of the letters down as well. I think we're good. I'm just adjusting the end of the tail. I want it to have a natural flow and not look forced. All right. So I'm just locking the uh, text so I can adjust this. As, uh, as I'm making adjustments, um, sometimes if the text is in front, uh, the area that the text takes up will sometimes overlap uh, design elements, and you'll actually just keep selecting your text and not actually get a hold of your design element for adjustment. So I think we're going to go right here. I don't want to push this too far to the left because it brings a, it makes a funny point at the bottom of my C. All right, I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go ahead and just click and drag over this Part so far and group it. Let's see, I just noticed when I selected it, the tail is sticking out quite a bit from the letters. Uh, one thing I like to do is just, I'll drag a box over my elements to see uh, how much stuff is sticking out and is it visually balancing. Okay. So, make sure that's the only piece I have selected. I'm going to just arrow key left until the C is up against the back end of that box, the same as the top C. And then I'm able to uh, see down here if I bring this part of the tail in. Uh, It's okay if it sticks out a little bit, but I think for the purpose of the kind of balance I'm going for, I think I want it to be right even. Okay. I like to see the end kind of have more of an angle. It's got more of a movement feel, which is what I'm after. All right. So classic corner is set with our tail, our script, Everything's grouped, we're good to go. Let me center that in our document right here. I'm not sure how well that's centered because like I said with text, the bounding box always goes beyond. Um, but for right now, I'm gonna hide that and bring our template back. Uh, Command Y to go to wireframe mode. Command minus sign or dash will uh, will zoom out incrementally. And let's move our wrenches real quick. 
Okay. So garage looks good right about there. I'm going to be making a badge right here. So I want to make this rectangle fit exactly the height of the word garage. And then I'll just holding option, drag it out. Send it, send it to back and then I'll make the word garage white, get rid of the stroke. And I like the way that looks. So we'll keep that. I'm going to make this a little bit wider, select the two and center them. And I'll group that. All right. Next thing I want to do is make a circle, uh, selecting, let's see. I'm going to copy the X and Y locations of the rectangle because it is centered with our text. And then I want to center our circle with our rectangle. If I don't do this and I just use the alignment tools, then it's going to be, it's going to include the offset of the text bounding box. As we can see just that little bit of space down under the box and then it wouldn't be centered. All right. So now that's correct. Let's send it to the back, make it a little bit larger. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it in front and then I'm going to select our bar with the word garage and I'm going to make a mask and that's going to be command seven. You can also go to object, uh, come down to uh, clipping mask and make. Uh, you release the mask by command shift seven. Nope, option shift seven. So let's see if I select it. Command option seven. Yep. Command seven. Okay. I'm going to change that back um, circle to a black outline. I will eventually be adding some text to that. Next thing I want to do is uh, elongate these wrenches so that I can make the box ends of them a little bit smaller. Uh, it looks like what I probably want is about that size. Okay. So let's just reduce that a little. That looks about right. Let's see how it looks up here. I also grab that X uh, location from the circle and then select my cross wrenches. All right, so I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lock everything but the wrenches, Command two. Go back to wireframe mode, type A for my direct selection tool, click and drag over the box end of the first wrench. And just grabbing any anchor point, I'm going to hold shift and pull it down. Go right there. Come to the other side. And this time I'm going to hit, oh, I want to make sure I get everything on this end of the wrench. I did that again. All right, I'm going to hit return and I'm going to go minus on the horizontal. And I'm going to say, okay. So that brought us down there. I'm going to ungroup this set and then align it again. Okay. It looks like in my original sketch, I had them not quite angled as much. So just typing in R, I adjusted the first one and then I selected the next one, hit return, and I'm going to add a minus for the rotation on that one. And we'll set it in just like that. It's not exactly the same as what we used before, but it's going to represent the same way. Let's see, we'll group it. I'm going to go ahead and also get rid of that outline um, because we don't see where they're crossing. I'm going to um, unlock everything. So that's command option two. Deselect it, command shift A. Type the direct selection tool so I can lock garage. And then the uh, rectangle behind garage, I want to add a white line. We'll go ahead and use our fill color. And then I want to put that to the back. So I'm going to show you what that did. Uh, when you first add a stroke, it's going to center it on your path. And then you have the option to have it affect only inside the path or only outside the path. And that's where I want it. I don't want to reduce the size of that rectangle at all. And four might be a bit heavy. We'll go two. Okay. Uh, the next thing I want to do is start adding some 
content. So I want to use Restore, Repair, Customize. I'm going to, uh, let's see. I'll copy my circle, paste it in front. Oops, copied the wrong circle. Okay, let me select Garage, Lock it, Command 2, select the circle behind. Now we look in our uh, fill in stroke, and you can see we have a black stroke. That's the one I want. Copy that. Deselect it just by either Command Shift A or select off your artboard. And Command F to paste in front. I'm going to type a D just so I can see that that is, has been clearly done. Sometimes I'll do this and I'll grab um, a path that has been used for a mask or something like that, and then it reacts uh, different than I'm expecting. So this just makes sure I know what I'm getting. All right, copy that. Type a T. Come back to our circle. Holding Option, I'm going to go right down to this anchor point, get right on it, click Command V. So our type is white, we want to change that to black. Okay. I want to make it a little bit outside of that, uh, make it a little bit bigger. I want to make it a little bit bigger than the circle, just putting a little bit of space between the baseline of the text and that stroke we have around the wrenches. Go with that. Uh, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, and then I want to run established 2010 um, curved under the design. So here I'm going to copy, paste in front, type a T for the text tool, just double click over that line of text, and hit caps lock, EST apostrophe D. 2010. All right. Uh, with that text select, uh, the next thing I do is I go to the the main selection tool, um, and then just to make to get it selected, just to get it selected. Next thing I do is all right. Then I uh, select the main. <clears throat> then I select the main selection tool, and double click the type tool. I'm going to keep it on rainbow. The option it gives us is rainbow, skew, 3D, stair step, and gravity. I want rainbow. It's just going to keep it um, circular. Apply a line to path to baseline, which is where I want it. It's going to keep it to where the text is against uh, the blue. And flip. So, oh. All right, uh, so then I hit the main selection tool, double click the type tool, rainbow is what I want, hit flip, okay. Type an R, I'm gonna hold uh, shift and rotate that until established 2010 is centered on the bottom of my piece. All right, and then I'm gonna hold shift and option and drag that out until the blue is wrapping the top of the text. Type an I for the eyedropper tool, and then just come back to restore, and I'm just gonna click right over the E, and you can see it reduced the size of our established 2010. I can get rid of that shape, which was just to give me reference for the sizing for the wrenches. And now, this is overall too large, so I'll just select that, reduce it a little. And now I wanna come in and start fine tuning uh, the badge. Uh, type in, typing an A and then holding Option, it uh, gives me that selection tool that gets all the anchor points selected. And I can see on my fill and stroke that there's nothing there. That means that's my mask. So I'm going to lock that. Select again. Now I've got the black. So I'm just going to make that one a little bit bigger. And kind of mess with where that line is going to go. I think I do want that to just go on the inside. I like that. So 10 point, that seems to work. And we have something unique going on here. I have that path, um, that stroke only going on the outside. And you can see the way it intersects. It's overlapping that um, circular path. So I'm going to copy that. I want to paste that in front. And I'm going to reduce the size just to give it kind of a cool visual. 
There we go. All right. Uh, in selecting these, I can see that my wrenches are not properly aligned. So let me get those things set correctly. Ah, it looks like they're different sizes. All right, so I'm gonna delete that one. So like this, I'm just gonna adjust it a little bit more just to get a little bit more um, mileage out of it, I guess. I'm gonna select the garage and the stroke that it sits oops, that it sits with, and I'm gonna just arrow key that down a little bit just so that the uh, top of the wrench and the bottom of the wrench have um, kind of a centered feel. All right, I'm going to copy this, Command C, Command F, paste in front, type an O for the reflect tool, hit return, and vertical. That's exactly what we're looking for. Go ahead and group them. Everything is set. All right. I feel like maybe we need to add something to these two spots. Almost if it has restore, repair, customize, establish 2020. Um, uh, all equally spaced. So let me go to character and just increase the size of all of this. Okay. And uh, it's just um, option eight is how you get the bullets. So I'm going to go um, to both sides of the established. Uh, it looks like we've got the right amount of space between established and the bullet, but the other part is a little bit too close. So that looks pretty good. All right, just selecting the established 2010. I want to just pull it a little bit um, out from where it was so I can bring it in and get it set right on top. Type an I, go to the R or the E, select, and then it'll perfectly match the font. Nope. I can go ahead and delete that square. So click and drag again, group it. I'm gonna unhide classic corner and let's see. Looking at our sketch, so classic corner is not quite as heavy uh, in real life as it was in the sketch. So let me do two things. One is I want to bring this size down a little bit. The other thing I want to do is I'm going to duplicate my layer, just hitting the three bars, little hamburger menu, and hit duplicate one. I'm going to select my grouped uh, classic corner, type an E for the free transform tool and pull this down. Uh, holding shift will maintain the constraints. Actually, I want to see it fill out a little bit more of our uh, sketch. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is go to Effects, Warp, and Arch. So this gives us a bunch of different options. Arc is going to do uh, we went over that in our last video uh, with the stripes that we put above and below the text where arc is more following a path and arch is following a shape. You can see here on the tool that it kind of Ys out on the edges where with arch the sides stay vertical. So the reason for this is it gives us um, some lift to the, the bottom of the graphic here but it's not affecting so much the top. So it's not like the whole thing is getting this big drastic arch. I'm gonna drop that to 25%, okay. Uh, next thing we do is go to Object, Expand Appearance. And now it's converted that to Outlines. I'm gonna keep it selected, go to Pathfinder and Unite. And I think I can probably, I'm gonna grab this I'm going to grab this bounding box handle right down here and just make it a little bit bigger, holding shift and alternate. 
And then on this one, I'm going to make the badge a little bit larger as well. All right, let's get into coloring it. Uh, we're gonna do all this work in the appearance panel. We're also going to uh, include our drop shadow in the appearance panel. This is gonna give the type depth and dimension. All right, so let's open that up. Here we go. We wanna select our content here, classic corner, and we're going to add a fill. It also gave us a stroke right here. So we're going to see, add a stroke of black. We want to go ahead and open up our stroke window and we want to put um, caps doesn't really do anything on this. I, I know I always mention to round the cap um, that only affects uh, if you have a path that runs and, and doesn't connect to another path. So if it's just an open-ended path, that's relevant. Otherwise, it's not gonna do anything. Um, I just do it just so that mentally I know that I have rounded all my uh, corners and ends. Um, so we wanna bump this out. Let's see, we'll go 18 points. And then I wanna drag it down under the fill. And then the fill, we're gonna make white. So just click the box and select our spot color. All right, we're gonna duplicate our stroke. And on the bottom one, we're gonna make it red. And bump that out, let's see how, let's see, I think what I wanna do is make the first one a little bit thicker. All right, that looks good. All right, let's duplicate the black one again. All right, and then this one we're going to um, add to our for our drop shadow. We're also going to duplicate the red, and we'll be doing the same effect to that. So, but let's select this stroke. Okay, go to Effect and scroll down to Distort and Transform, and we're going to go to Transform. Okay, so we want to move this out of the way a little bit so we can see the effect we're having, and we're going to move it. And I'm just going to move it incrementally. So just arrow key up. And you see it drew, moved it to the right. And then I'm going to do an arrow key up again. Let's see if it's at the right place. So vertically. Okay, so vertically arrow key up one. And horizontally arrow key up one. Say okay. And then we're going to come down and select that second red stroke that we made. Come back up and we're going to just apply transform. And you can see it added that red on the outside. And we also have nice depth uh, and dimension with that word classic corner coming up off the page. All right, so next thing I wanna do, I'm not sure what tricks there is to this technique. So I'm gonna do it my old school way. Uh, I'm copying our content. So just select it, Command C, copy, paste in front. And then for this one, I want to get rid of everything. So we want to just dump all of our appearance panel content. Okay. And then for fill, we're going to come back to our swatches and go white. All right. So what I want to do here is I'm going to add a cream colored, a tan colored stroke. I want to zoom in. I'm going to round my corners and then I'm going to increase the size of that. I also want it to just affect the inside. And that just gives me a better idea of where I'm going with my effect. I think I'll go five points and I have a fill and a stroke. Hit, hitting command eight makes it a compound path and it looks like it wiped out my, uh, my work. So I'm going to go ahead and come back in, put that tan put a white fill, and then we had it at five points, only affecting the inside. All right, go ahead and uh, and just hit the round for the corners. Uh, you can do the caps, like I said, I do that just as a reminder that I've done it. Um, since we made this a compound path, we can go to Object, Expand Appearance. And now I wanna zoom in just so we can see, we have uh, the tan part is the inside line here and the outside line, and then the white, is our original shape, um, but we don't need any of that. So what we're gonna do is go over to Pathfinder and we're gonna minus front. 
So that's going to delete the tan from that white section. And you can see now we just have that center piece left. I'm going to color it tan. Come back up. And I'm going to drag, I'm going to select this, click, holding Shift and Option, pushing up and to the left, making sure that it stays on the constrained path. And let's see, I think right about there, and then make that white. And you can see what we have now is a cool bevel that gives even more effect and dynamic to our graphic. All right, now we're going to be going on a dark charcoal heather. So it's not going to be a strong detail, which is fine. I want it to be a tertiary element, something that you just kind of notice as a detail a little bit later on. I want to rotate it a little bit uh, just to kind of go along with the, uh, the flow and the movement of classic and corner. So let's see what five degrees looks like. Try, try 10. I think 10 is probably my magic number. I think that looks good. Let's move it down a little bit. You can see how we just kind of have it tucking right under this cool arch of the tail on our C. All right, so what I want to do is I want to keep garage white. So I'm going to lock that. But the bar behind it, I want to make red with our spot color. And then I want to do something special here. So what I want to do is um, convert this path to outline. So this is a uh, an elliptical uh, shape, and I have it with a fill of black. It's only affecting the inside of the shape. So it's great. That's uh, what I want to do is expand appearance. You can also do the same thing if you come down to path and outline stroke. Okay, so now I want to take the garage, and I don't want a white stroke on that. I want black. All right, and then I want this red. I want to put a black stroke on it, and then I'm going to deal with that extra piece that we have here in a, in a second. All right, so let's have it only affect, if I can, oh, it looks like I'm not going to have control down on this end. Sometimes that happens when, you, um, when you're editing and you're expanding things, it'll run into this issue. So what I'll do is go to Pathfinder, Hit the little hamburger menu, make a compound shape, and expand. And now you can see we have these options available to us. So I'm going to hit it to where it only affects the outside. And then deselect, and then come back in and select that black stroke that we had in there. And I'm going to color that red. So the reason I'm coloring that red is I like this little effect right here where the bar that garage is sitting on top of doesn't, the bar doesn't just completely lay over that oval, but it's like, it's a part of it. If I get rid of that shape, then that line just runs all the way to the end. And, and I feel like I lose a little something of what I was after. All right. Let's see if we bump that up to a three point stroke and then do the same thing down here. That looks pretty good. All right, so let's copy that. Uh, you can either do Command A or you can click and drag over your design. Copy. And let me open, real quick, open my mock-up template. I want that to be a charcoal gray, so let's select the uh, fill color, which it looks like I've got. This file has the shading and the heather locked. Uh, we're going to go ahead and keep that heather layer, so that's not a problem. Um, typing in X just because my stroke was forward. I want fill forward. And let's see. I don't want it that dark. Let's go over here and just work straight from black. Just bring it down. I'm just incrementing down a little bit so that the design will have a good charcoal heather look. Let me unlock the heather. I want to make sure that it's set to multiply. Nope, multiply. All right, I like that. Go ahead and lock that again and then select our fill color and just 
reduce that down until we have a good charcoal gray. I think that looks good, 65%. All right, and then our shading, let me deselect that, make sure that is also multiply, it is. Perfect. So now we're gonna select the art layer. This mock-up is free in the Easy Design freebie. You get nine design templates you can work with. Uh, you get all the fonts, you get textures, um, spot colors, and you get this awesome mock-up. So right here on the art layer, we're gonna hit paste, Command V. And it's obviously a little too big, so we're just gonna grab that bounding box holding Shift and Option. We're gonna bring it in centered and get it into the place that we want it. It's a little bit big. I want this design to be big though. We're kind of going for that kind of obnoxious gas monkey look. All right, I think that's it. We could come down here and make some of this type white, but my concern is that it would be a little too forward. It's a little too forward. If we make it tan, you know, actually that's not bad at all. So what if we make the wrenches with a tan outline, making sure that those stroke is only affecting the outside and then make it just a tiny bit smaller. We don't want to have the wrenches, um, the wrench ends go behind that bar that garage sits on top of what we want it to go just a little bit smaller so it's not touching the edges. And then I think a half a point since it's only affecting the outside. I think that's good. All right, there it is. I hope you enjoyed this one. This actually turned out different than I had intended. I was going to keep the simplicity of the small text on our badge, uh, just keeping that super subtle, but Bringing it out a little bit just gave a little bit more uh, vibe to the design. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that like button for good measure. If you want to expand your design skills and your knowledge of Adobe Illustrator, hit the link in the box below and take my Adobe Illustrator Made Easy Intro to Illustrator course. It's free and it walks you through all the steps of setting up your document, setting up your workspace, and how to use everything that's there. All right, I hope you have a great week and we'll see you in the next one.